Welcome to Sausalito Books by the Bay. I'm Cheryl Pop, and we have a very exciting program for you this afternoon. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Indian summer day. We are going to be celebrating the launch of two very exciting books, and you're going to meet an artist, musicians, um, actresses. It's a very multimedia book launch party, which we've never done here before. And they are actually live with me here at the store right now, which is very exciting. So before we get into the program, I wanna go over some Zoom protocol. You can see us, we can't see you, um, which is sometimes helpful, and you're muted. But you do have an opportunity to ask questions, which we will answer at the end of this presentation. At the bottom of your screen, you probably see a Q&A, and you can put in a question, and at the end, we'll be going through those. But before that, thank you again for joining us. It's really an honor to have local Marin County author Tracy Tandy with us here today, launching her brand new book. She's an accomplished author. She's done a lot of writing, and we'll hear about that more later. But she's just finished writing Druk and Mikta, which is a children's picture book. I'm not going to show it to you. She's going to. And Crushed, well, it's part of her Dream Haven series, Moon Witch of Crushed Tide Island, which is a young adult book. They are both wonderful, wonderful books. Okay. And um, you're also going to hear today three songs that have been written and will be performed live here, just especially for these books, which is exciting. There's going to be a drawing for books at the end. We'll tell you how to order these books if you don't already have one. But right now, um, you're going to hear from Tracy Tandy, our special author guest today, the secret history of how these books came together. And I think you're going to be wowed by everything she has to share with you. So thank you for joining us today, Tracy. And we really look forward to this afternoon. It's all yours. Thank you, Cheryl. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. So when I mean secret history about these two books, and that's middle grade fantasy, Moon Witch of Crushed Island, and picture book, Druk and Nita, I mean the story behind and hidden in the pages that you might not find out any other way. So let's begin with Druk and Mita. Druk and Mita is the story of two friends who are so different from each other, but over time as they grow up together, they learn to see and appreciate the world through each other's eyes. It's a wonderful way that they learn to have open hearts and those open hearts change them forever. So I know that now, but Secret History One, six years ago, when I jumped on a plane in San Francisco, flew across the whole Pacific Ocean and up over the highest mountains on earth, which I think some of you might know are called the Himalayas, I landed in a very small country called Bhutan. Let me show you. There it is, right here, that little jelly bean of a country in red. So Bhutan is a small country and it's very rugged, but it's a lovely place. So let me tell you a little about it. I had no idea that the inspiration for Druk and Mita was there waiting for me. Does anybody know mm -hmm. or can you guess the word for dragon in Bhutanese? If you guess Druk, you are absolutely right. And Mita means heart of the world in several languages. So in Bhutan, this beautiful country, we met many very interesting people. They were kind and hardworking. Most of the families are farmers. Here's two young farmers dressed up for festival day. Even though they live in rural settings, these people are also tech savvy because the Bhutanese government dropped a million cell phones, one for every citizen to them, no matter where they live or what their situation is. Some of them are nomads, like this woman. She tends the yaks way up in the highest snow-ridden lands. What's a yak? This is. She's a brave woman, isn't she? 
some of them are studying to be monks like these young gentlemen. The feast days for the Bhutanese people are Buddhist religious holidays. And they're so important to them. They're so enthusiastic about them. They love the stories and the costumes, the music and the dances. And the dances are beautiful. They train all year long for these festivals. They're important because it's a chance for people to gather. Sometimes they don't see each other for a whole year at a time. And also for their religion, but for the kids, it's a holiday for all the hard work. Another time that the Bhutanese people gather, and sometimes this is weekly, is for their national sport. I don't know if any of you can guess what it is, but let me show you. <gasps> Archery. Okay, I'm thinking Robin Hood is super jealous of this one. These, these arrows sail. It's amazing. So, oh, that's not right. So when I returned home, I woke up every morning for an entire week with the same words in my head, every morning, seven days in a row. And those words were, one night, a little girl had a big dream. Okay, finally, after a week, I go, okay, fine. I got up, I am a writer, hello, I got up and I wrote it down. And when I did, a picture formed in my mind to go with those words. Let me show you. Oops, this is what I drew. So the story of Druk and Nita began to pour out and in time, I was lucky enough to have extraordinary illustrator artist, Lucy Arnold, agree to do the illustrations. And this is what that drawing became. Uh, one thing, here's a secret history. All of the illustrations and drawings in Druk and Nita are watercolors. That is a meticulous and demanding form to try to create double spreads. So, Let's take a look inside. One night, a little girl had a big dream. His name was Druk. He leaned close to whisper her name, Nita. Okay, I'm gonna interrupt here for a second to say, that you can look for Druk and Mita's hearts on every page. I promise it's gonna be easier than Where's Waldo. Mita showed Druk butterflies. Secret history, every one of these butterflies is really living in the Himalayas. These are real butterflies, as are the other creatures that are and flora and fauna and plants and bioform, all of it is real to the Himalayas. Lucy did so much research and I think you're gonna enjoy seeing those. Druk taught me to, to sing. Okay, another secret history. Both Lucy and I love to sing. So we had so much fun imagining a voice lesson with Druk. Maybe you can do that too. They knew each other from the inside out. Okay, so I'm going to let you enjoy discovering. <laughs> I wish that one come up, but it does. I'm going to let you discover the full story of Druk and Nita. And I think you're gonna really like the last page it's a surprise. Right now, we're going to show Keith Saunders at the piano, Lisa Lindsley singing for us, and they're going to sing Druk and Mita's song, The Night We Found Forever. Touch the sky. 
gleaming gold in the dragon scales. When those stars began to move, I knew you had seen me too. When our dream is done, awake where we Since then we stand close side by side, seeing through each other's eyes. We cherish every grain of sand, catch each raindrop in our hands. When our dream is done, Lisa, that was so much fun. You know, I wrote these songs, but I never actually got to hear them performed in this way. It's so beautiful to me. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. So Moon Witch of Crushed Tide Island is book two in my middle grade series. Let's take a look at that. Okay, it's book two. This is Dream Haven, book one. I'm gonna tell you just a little bit of the secret history of how this series was created. So the first thing you need to know is, I think some of you do too, that an editor is somebody who offers suggestions to help you make your story and your book even better. Well, I had a tough editor. <laughs> is, is Peach, my very opinionated Norwegian forest cat. So Peach had clear opinions about what should go on here, but I'm the one who figured out what the story was. I just want you to know. So I think that you probably know, even if you don't have your own cat, that they really like to nap and they like to do it often. So I began to wonder, is Peach going to a different life every time she takes a cat nap? And how is she getting there through some dreamy cat universe? From those ideas, Dream Haven was born, along with Nick the cat, who is the only cat ever in all of catdom and history who can't reach his nine lives. And because he can't, he's an outcast. It's a really big deal when he makes his first friends feline, human, and magical. This is Shift. He's a magical pangolin and he lives in Dreamhaven. 
he came to life and sits, all of these black and white illustrations, sit at the top of every chapter, thanks to, thanks to Kara Bevan, extraordinary, wonderful illustrator artist. I'm gonna share the URL for Lucy and Kara later on in the screens, but you guys should check them out because they have extraordinary art. So secret history about Kara and I, I looked at over 375 portfolios from illustrators from all, all over the world. And it wasn't until I had seen a painting by Kara of a fox sitting happily by himself in the forest. It gave me shivers. And once I found out how to reach her, I begged her to be my illustrator. I'm so lucky to have her. So let me think about what I want to tell you about that. Oh, Clavier, here we go. Clavier is very magical as well. By day, she is a bronze statue. But at night, among her friends, all that metal melts away to reveal the woman beneath. Clavier is not only a woman, but she is the guardian of Dream Haven. She also guides those who are lost to safety. This is her song, Clavier's Theme. That was so much fun. Okay, so let's uh, let me share with you that Moon Witch of Crush Tide Island, book two. In this one, 
Nick and his friends face the cunning and wicked moon witch, Impalara. Impalara can travel on moonlight and become moonlight. This is her, see her in the water? And this is the moon and this is where she lives. Oh my. But you know what? That's not enough for Impalara. No, she wants more. Not only does she wanna live forever, but she wants to rule the realm of dream. In order to do that, she's going to have to steal the very special powers of the very special dream dancer, one and only dream dancer, Rose. Impalara lures the, um, all of our heroes to, I'm signaling to people behind me, lures the heroes to Krestein Island and uh, we're going to right now take you to the moment when they arrive. All right, let me do this. You're going to get that weird message again, but don't worry about it. We got you. We got you. All right, here we go. We're going to share a short bit of Moon Witch of Crush Tide Island. This chapter is entitled 20 Questions. Our heroes, Nick the Cat, Rose the Dream Dancer Cat, and 11-year-old human, Mark Farallon, have just landed on Crush Tide Island, home of the Moon Witch in Polara. It's night, and the only light is coming from a wash of brilliant stars above them. Rose and Nick have suddenly dropped into a tack stance in front of Mark. A girl who looks about Mark's age moves towards them from the shadows and says, you're the assassins? No, we're here to rescue our friends. Who are you? Friends, but there isn't anyone. Wait, unless you mean, are you talking about the two cats caged in my aunt's tower? Are you a moon witch? No. No, and you don't have much time. If Mrs. Holly heard the alarm, she'll cut the ropes. What ropes? Oh, you really aren't assassins, are you? The ropes on the portcullis, of course. I only discovered the caged cats last night, so I don't know what my aunt has planned for them, but I'm positive you should get your friends and flee the island as fast as possible. Wow, your cat has... That's something your cat has. I, I just wanted to see you better to see if you were telling the truth. If I'm telling the truth, look, whoever, whatever you are, none of us want to be here, but Impalara is holding three of our friends prisoner, two here and one in Dream Haven. We're going to free them, so just let us pass. I, I knew she was up to something bad. I I'll have to help you, but only if you promise not to hurt anyone. If Impalara attacks us, we will fight. Well, then we'll have to find a way to keep everyone safe. So follow me. Wait, why would you help us and not your aunt? And if Impalara didn't send you to lead us into a trap, how did you get to the dock so fast? The hunter just sounded the alarm. I, I felt you step back into the water and the lakeshore. You what? Yes. We have to go right now. Grab your cat. Okay, <clears throat> that's that scene. It's pretty fun, I think. All right, so we're going to give you a wicked taste of Impalara. In her song, there's always someone dreaming somewhere. <laughs> There's always someone dreaming somewhere, how lucky can I be? There's always someone dreaming somewhere, all the more for me. So close your eyes without a care, I'll rob you while you sleep. I won't take every dream you dream, just the ones you want to keep. 
when I was young, as young as you, I could do magic. It's true, who needs a rabbit or a hat? I turn to moonlight just like that. My next trick is so sublime. I'll steal your dreams and make them mine. There's always someone dreaming somewhere. How lucky can I be? There's always someone dreaming somewhere. All the more for me. So close your eyes without a care. I'll rob you while you sleep. I won't take every dream you dream of, just the ones you want to keep. If every cat has nine fine lives, I should have ten or more besides. Why should cats have all the fun when I am stuck with only one? One furry felines, I'm watching you. I'll take your worlds and your dreams too. There's always someone dreaming somewhere. How lucky can I be? There's always someone dreaming somewhere. All the more for me. So close your eyes. Without care, I'll rob you while you sleep. I won't take every dream you dream, just the ones you want to keep. Yay! Thank you. All right, that's Wicked Impalara. So as you can see, she's, um, okay, we might say a piece of work, yes. So uh, I'm going to prep for the drawing now. Cheryl's gonna tell you how to get some books and uh, if you wanna order them, and then we'll do the drawing. Cheryl's gonna pull names uh, after that. Oh, you know what I need to tell you guys? We have activity packs for you that are on the desk right up at the desk marks my husband is going to go grab one for me because i forgot to get one inside are coloring pages with figures from drick and nita from moon witch of crush tide island we have a word search a crossword puzzle and what's the other thing oh a maze yes so we have those things for you thank you so much this is what it looks like so if you're local you can come and pick that up if you're not, you can go to my website. I'll put the URL, URL up at the end here and you can download them. I have to be honest, I only got the word things on there. I could not make the um, graphics load, but I promise that I will work on that. Okay, so I'm turning you over to Cheryl now, but I'll see you in a minute. Well, first of all, thank you, Tracy, for such a brilliant presentation. It was so dynamic to have all the multimedia. And Lisa, you have a beautiful voice. Keith, you're a fabulous musician. Um, I'm just absolutely delighted. You all did a terrific job. And the reading that you and Lisa did, um, I love it. So thank you so much. And I hope everyone, it took everyone on a wonderful journey, two different journeys, <laughs> one to Bhutan and one to Crush Tide Island. So I think you'll really enjoy the books. We, of course, have these books available at the store. We're open seven days a week here on the waterfront in Sausalito from 10 until 6 every day except Sunday when we're open noon until 5. Both books are available. And if you'd like to have them personally, Personalized or get a signed edition. Um, Tracy lives nearby, so you can call us, you can email us, and you'll be getting all that information after this. Um, but we'd be happy to hold a book for you, get payment over the phone. We're very COVID conscious, so we can ship you the book or you can pick it up here, curbside, or come into the store if you wish and browse some more. But we do have both books and they are delightful. If you have anyone in your life um, who is middle grade or picture book age, 
um, wonderful Christmas holiday gifts, but I know I'm getting all the books for my nieces and nephews. So um, thank you again. So anyway, we are here and you're going to get a copy of this video if you were registered for this. So you can look at it again and that will have information. It'll have our telephone number, how to contact us, but you can also just go online to Sausalito Books by the Bay. So we hope to see you. Thank you. So do you want me to do the drawing now? Okay. Yes. So, how many, how many names am I supposed to draw? Two. Two. Okay. And All right. Two I'm people, gonna move. Cheryl, oh. those two people, they get to pick which book they want. Okay. Whatever book they want of, of okay. Chicken Mita and, and, uh, okay. Which of Crest Night Island. Okay. So Lori Tandy. Oh my gosh. I know Lori Tandy. And okay, um, I think we're going to put that one back. Lori, I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does that she already have the book? That is my sister-in-law. Oh my gosh, <laughs> are you kidding? I didn't know that. That's okay. my sister-in-law. So I think Lori's going to be okay if we put that back. <laughs> I think she will be too. Okay. How about, um, is it Edie Parker? Edie Parker? Eddie Parker? It's E-D-I-E. -E. Edie Parker? Are you out there, Edie? We have, I have your Gmail address, so we'll contact you and you get to book whatever, whichever book you want. Okay, one more, here's the big goal. We had um, 70 people registered for this event. So all your names are in here if you registered. Sarah Hayes. Wow. Sarah Hayes, okay. Somebody everyone knows, great. So those are our two winners. Thanks, and I guess, um, I will thank everyone because I know Laura, I think Tracy wants to close, but I will just thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. And I will thank Tracy and Lisa and Keith once again. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation as much as I have. And do Tracy. you want to do some Q&A? Do we have any? Oh, yes, we, yes, yes, we do have q and A. I'm sorry. No, thank no you. worries. No worries. Um, okay, so this is from David, a David Keem. Did your editor, Kat, help protect your dream of the little girl, Mita, with a big dream from Thief of the Piece of Work Cat? Does that make sense to you? It doesn't, but okay. I can say Did that you? my Norwegian Forest Cat and editor was very protected of me as long as I was writing what she liked. So... You know, it, it could go either way. Thank you for your question, David. So Wendy Harris would like to know if we get to meet Lucy, the fabulous illustrator, who I know unfortunately could not be with us today, but would you like to respond to that as well? I will, and thank you for your question. Lucy was supposed to be here today, but there was a family emergency in which she has to stay quarantined. And she has been in quarantine for, I think a month now. So she's watching. And yes, we will have other events and Lucy will be part of them. And um, she was disappointed not to be here, but she's doing the quarantine for all the right reasons. So thank you for your question. And someone else asked about illustrating Druk, which because we don't have Lucy, I don't know if you want to try to answer that to some extent. I can try to answer it. Okay. Uh, what's the question? Tell us more about illustrating Druk and Mikta. Okay, so... How you work was, together on it, maybe. We did. We did. Um, Lucy likes to say that she's willing to work on my books as long as I'm the art director. So <laughs> we would sit and we already had the text and we would go ahead and I would say, well, here's my idea for it. And Lucy would go, hmm, okay. And then she would go to her drawing board and she would sketch something out. And then she'd come back and I'd say, you know, I think it's a little different than that. Um, the one that she got like, bam, was Druk. That puppy Druk, she had that beautifully from the very first moment and did a bunch of research on different kinds of dragons and all that. So a lot of what went into these illustrations are a ton of research 
Uh, as I said, everything in this is truly found in the Himalayas. So Lucy did a ton of research. Then she would sketch. Then there were times when I'd go, oh man, Luce, I just can't get it. This just isn't, I don't know. I can't, mm, I, mm, it's not right. And Lucy would <clears throat> sigh, but she would very patiently sketch something else. And eventually when we agreed on what we wanted on the scene, on the page, she would then begin the watercolor, which once you begin, you can't really edit. There's really not much editing that you can do in watercolor. So each of those animals and creatures and flowers are drawn with tiny, tiny brushes and washes of paint. And on the last one you saw, they knew each other from the inside out. That has metallic paints to make it the universe. The yeah, the illustrations are truly phenomenal. I mean, the story is enchanting, but the book for its illustrations alone is so worth it. They're just absolutely brilliant. Um, do you have plans to share Druk and Mita with some of your friends in Bhutan? I do. Uh, I dedicated this book to Lucy and to the two guides who helped my husband and I through the country. And I am, I have told them that I was writing a book, but you know, it takes a long time to produce a book. In this case, uh, you know, the original idea was six years ago. So, uh, but they are going to get copies for sure. Great. So someone also wanted to know what is the word count on Druk and Mita? Do you know offhand? I do. It's 71 words. Okay, great. Um, Okay, what is your favorite book? And this is from Max. You know who Max is? No. Sonia Dorado. Son Sonia Dorado. Oh, Max. Yes. Okay. Max is Sonia's son. All right. Yes. Hi, okay. hi, Max. Um, do you mean my favorite book of my books or my favorite book in the whole world? Mm, I don't know that he's maybe you know a question I often ask authors are what was you, like your favorite for instance in reference to Druk and Mita your favorite picture book as a child which may have inspired you to write I don't know if that's what Max wanted to know but I'll, that's I'll a help good question that's right. a good question okay so I think that um I started collecting children's picture books when I was very young. I fell in love with lots and lots of books. I loved the little golden books and I loved alphabet books and I had a special collection of those. I really liked um, Maurice Sendak and uh, he wrote Where the Wild Things Are. But as an adult, my favorite picture book right now, besides my own picture books, we have two, um, Alphabet Dreams and Dirk and Mita, both illustrated by Lucy, uh, is A Fairy Went to Marketing. It's this sweet, beautiful story of generosity. So, you know, the fairy goes marketing and she brings home a mouse and a fish and a bird. And then the next day she sets them free. That oh, <laughs> so so Max did get back and he said he wanted to know which is the favorite of your books. Oh, my which goodness. Your favorite? I know that's a hard question to answer. I can't do that, Max, because you know what? <laughs> I love them all. They all came from something deep. Some of the themes that I love as a kid are adventure and fantasy. Like when I was a kid, you may not know this, but maybe some of the parents or grandparents might. I watched Jason and the Argonauts and Sinbad and the Seven Seas and all the stop action shows. I was so into adventure. So I wanted to write adventure for mid-grade because that's my favorite age right now. And the picture books I wanted to write because uh, I love the beauty of the pages. And uh, also, you know, Druk and Mita was a gift. It just came to me. And so I had to do it. It showed up for a week and wouldn't shut up. So um, I hope that's okay, that I can't really pick a favorite because they're all favored in a different way. That's a good answer, I think. So someone has asked, and I'll let you explain this, um, what are the appropriate ages for both books? A lot of people don't understand picture books, middle grade, young adults. So maybe you could answer that in your own I can words. I do that. 
So picture books, Drick and Mita can probably be read by a precocious six, seven year old on their own, maybe precocious five year old. There are plenty of kids who are really good readers already. It is only 71 words. So it's a great starter picture book. Um, if you're teaching someone to read as long, young as three, four, five, six. But one of the things that picture books are really important for is being read together. So one of my goals is to encourage adults with the children in your lives to sit and cuddle together and read these books together. Um, for the Dreamhaven series, Dreamhaven and Moon Witch of Crush Tide Island, those are mid grades. So those are middle graders. So that's like nine through 12 ish. Uh, I do know a precocious eight year old who read it like cover to cover, but there's, but there's some tough words in there. So that's sort of the age range I have in mind. How long did it take to write each of the books? Well, that's an interesting one. Uh, let's see. It took five years to go from Dreamhaven uh, first draft to book on the shelf. Okay, so that was five years. Um, between Dreamhaven and Moon Witch of Crush Tide Island, it took three years to write it because I also was doing Druk and Mita at the time. And you'd be surprised how much each book takes. <laughs> some of you who are writers and some of you who are also publishers like me it takes a lot to put a book out so it takes a while so it took three years to do um moon witch of crush tide island um Druk and mita was a long process because i originally here's some more secret history i originally thought it should be pen and ink like um the giving tree Shel Silverstein's book, which is all in black and white except the cover. And that's what I thought Drick and Mita should be. But you know what? When Lucy saw and read Drick and Mita, she said, there is no way this is black and white. Look at the country. Look at the colors in the country, the colors they're wearing, the colors in their costumes. And the dragon is not going to be black and white. He's <laughs> right that makes sense so it took a number of years for me to um well, sort of accept that it wasn't going to be a black and white i had in my head that's what it was but i came around and it was the right decision thanks to lucy and speaking of the illustrations someone would like to know if you've thought about entering the book in a um a contest or for a prize for illustration I know that they give those for children's books. We would love to. The Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, uh, I've been a member for 20 years. Um, that is, uh, they do have some illustration contests. I think they just did their, their one uh, for this year, but we may try and enter for next year. And um, I'm always, if anybody has any ideas for places to enter the books, I would love to do that. We'd love to win some contests because I, they're pretty amazing. I think you deserve to win some contests. So Thanks. two more, two more questions. Um, when, why did you go to Bhutan? I think you kind of answered this in the beginning, but um, this person maybe wasn't on line at that point. So no if you could problem. cover that again, that'd be great. Sure. So I went, my husband and I traveled to Bhutan. At that time, we also went to Cambodia, but I had asked to make a special trip to Bhutan because Bhutan is very deeply Buddhist. And I wondered what it would be like to be in such a deeply religious society. Also in Bhutan, the government is split in half. It is the monks and the government, the democracy. And in the middle is the druk, the dragon that unites them all, the thunder dragon. So it is a very unusual country. Also, some of you may have heard of it because instead of measuring their gross national product, they measure their gross national happiness. Their entire goal mm -hmm. is to measure and have happy citizens. 
And so each year they take polls and everyone participates. Well, I can't say everyone participates, but they hope everyone participates <laughs> and they are measuring their gross national happiness. Wonderful. One last question, I think, although I'll scan through them again for Michael Arnold. What are your top three favorite lullabies? Lullabies. Oh my goodness. That's a stumper. You know, I haven't sung a lullaby in a very long time. So um, I tend to make them up when I sing. Uh, um, you know what? I do. I just make them up. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there've been a couple questions about, uh, the name of the bookstore and how to buy a copy. Um, it's Sausalito Books by the Bay. And, um, the book itself is not on our website, but if you call us on our website, you'll find our phone number, you'll find an email to staff and just let us know you'd like one. Um, if you registered for the event through our website, you were able to actually pre-order a copy and ask it to be personalized or signed. Um, that I'm sure has gone away because that was part of the Zoom registration, but you can, um, it might still be up on our virtual, it might still be up on our event page, our event site on the website, but if not, just email us or call us. Uh, those numbers are on our website and we would be happy to make sure you get a book. If you live locally, as I said, you can pick it up here at the store or we're happy to ship it to you or any friends or family elsewhere that you would like to send it to. So I'm just scanning through. There's so many comments, Tracy, which I will share with you later about how wonderful it is and congratulations and great presentation and um, I will add to those kudos. It was wonderful. Thank you again, thank you. Tracy. And, and I want to your... say thank you to Cheryl and all the staff of Sausalito Books by the Bay. I want to say thank you to my publicist who has just handed me this sign. Okay, you guys, follow me <laughs> at Tracy Tandy, author. Uh, let's see. Instagram, Tracy M. Tandy, and Twitter at T2 Tandy. T2 Tracy? Yes. Do you know what? I'll, I'll include that in the follow up email <laughs> that we do to everyone. That sounds great. I am going right. to share my screen one more time. I just want to say to you guys, all of you who have been here and who have supported me all the years through being an author, thank you for everything. Let me just put up one more thing here. TracyTandy.com, LucyArnold.com, CaraBevon.com. Thank you for being here. And I will add to that thank you to all of you who joined us and to Tracy and Keith and Lisa. Be well, take care, and come visit us at Sauce Little Books by the Bay. Thank you all.